Cannondale have just launched a brand new version of their venerable Synapse. It's now in its fifth edition. The first one was launched right back in 2006. And this one is particularly interesting now because it includes integrated technology, lights and a radar system that alerts you of traffic approaching from behind. The idea being it increases your confidence as a rider, but also the convenience because it's all integrated and linked in together. In this video, I'm gonna explain how it works, but also I suspect there might be one or two of you for whom the idea of it proves quite contentious. So I'm also gonna explore that as well. Firstly, let's take a look at what's going on here. So some e-bikes and some city bikes come with lights built into the bikes, but road bikes, not typically, no. Canada, however, were doing some market research and they found that 85% of riders surveyed use lights some or all of the time. So you buy your road bike, you then buy some lights and you bolt them on. They also found, surprisingly, to me at least, that 15% of riders surveyed also used a radar system when they ride. And that's the same principle. You buy your bike, you buy your radar, and you bolt it onto it. Cannondale tried that tech, they liked it, and they felt that more riders would benefit from it if they either knew about it or it was more convenient to use. So they've integrated not one, but both into the bike. Convenience, because they're both run off a single battery, can be controlled by a single app and can turn on automatically, and they're there to give confidence to the rider. Both the lights and the radar are made using existing tech, but to Cannondale specifications, and the cables are then all hidden inside the bike, connected to a centrally mounted battery. The lights are made by Lazine, and the radar by Garmin. It's based on their various system. Now, it comprises of a radio transmitter, which emits a radar signal, and then a receiver that detects the signals that have been reflected back. The clever bit is that when analyzing the signals, it's able to pick out what are vehicles, how many there are, and how fast they're approaching. That information can then be displayed on a compatible head unit, Garmin or a Wahoo, for example, or dedicated Vario display, or indeed on the Cannondale SmartSense phone app. So I've got mine connected up to a Wahoo Element Bolt. And you can see on the screen, as soon as you do link it up, you've got a colored bar on the left-hand side. It's green when there's no cars, and then it goes to orange when it senses a car behind. And there's then also a little car icon that tracks from the bottom to the top of the screen as it gets closer to you. And then it'll also detect multiple cars as well. So at any point, you can have three, four, however many on there. And then if one approaches really quickly, so with a, a speed differential of 90k an hour or 55 mile an hour, it will flash red. And it can also set it up so that there's a, an audible alert as well. I'll be honest, it feels a little bit like Top Gun sometimes. Mav, Mav, we've got three bogeys at six o'clock. They got missile lock. They got missile lock. Mav, Mav, what are you gonna do, Mav? No, no, just me. I'll be totally honest here, I personally don't use a radar when I ride. I just haven't felt the need. Now, apparently the folks at Cannondale didn't use radar systems either until they conducted that market research, which showed that a significant proportion of their customers did. So they tried it and evidently really liked it. Now, I then started looking around online, particularly at YouTube comments, including under a GCN video from half a lifetime ago. Now, Brilliantly, most of the comments under that video actually focused on Dan's particularly poor hair game that day, which I was pleased to see. But those that did relate to the product interestingly changed in tone the more recent they were. So when the video first came out, there was a lot of, what's the point? And then recently, there's been a lot more of, I've got one, it's a game changer, I wouldn't go back. So far be it from me to say that because I personally don't use one, it's not for other people. Clearly, it is. Now, reasons given varied from having the confidence to ride more centrally in the road without worrying about cars approaching from behind, because as soon as one did show up on your head unit, you'd be able to move back in. 
Equally, having more confidence to move around in the road to avoid potholes, or to know when to single out when riding in a group, or indeed just not being taken by surprise when a car overtakes you quickly. And whereas I had thought perhaps the radar might make you want to dive into a bush when your head unit starts flashing red, I hadn't read about anyone taking quite such evasive action. No one is saying that it makes you safer, but it does seem to give riders more confidence. The case for lights is more cut and dried. At night, of course, it's your principal source of visibility. Although I do think reflectives are a nice thing to have as well. And if that's not enough, it's also a legal requirement. So having them fitted to your bike as standard does seem to make sense. Having them have the ability to turn on automatically when you ride well, that's just a Brucey bonus, isn't it? However, most people also think that daytime running lights are a very good thing. There have been a number of studies that show that cyclists with daytime running lights are more conspicuous to motorists. And there's even one that suggests that cyclists using daytime running lights have fewer accidents. Although, I think the data here could be interpreted in a slightly different way, which is that cyclists who choose to use daytime running lights are perhaps more cautious and therefore have fewer accidents. But either way, it seems like they make sense. With this in mind then, are having lights incorporated onto your bike at all times a good idea? And the only downsides really are that they add a little bit of weight, although they don't if you're going to use them anyway. And I suppose aesthetically, a bike with lights fitted doesn't look quite as minimalist and svelte as one without, but probably not that important in the grand scheme of things. I can also just say on a personal note that having lights mounted centrally to your handlebars is a source of great pleasure. I mean, genuinely it does my nut in when your light is mounted to one side. And so having it in the middle, oh, I can't be the only one who thinks like that, surely. Now, hopefully, no one is thinking at this point that having a radar fitted to your bike that gives you more confidence when you ride is a bad thing. But there are a minority of cyclists out there who think that taking on the burden of safety yourself is somehow distracting us from the bigger issue. The thinking going that cyclists shouldn't have to have daytime running lights or wear high vis or have radar fitted to your bike because cycling itself isn't inherently dangerous. It's the vehicles around us that make it so. Now, personally, I'm not sure how much I agree with that. I certainly don't think it's an either or issue, but I do think that there's a wider sense, particularly in the mainstream media, of victim blaming. So if a cyclist is hit by a car and they're not wearing fluoro kits or having a flashing daytime running lights, that somehow it's their fault. And so is it therefore setting a dangerous precedent to start selling bikes with all this kit already attached? Now, personally, I don't think it is, but I'd be very interested to hear your thoughts. So get involved in the comment section down below. Or is this simply the future of bike tech? Integrating products that we already use on a daily basis, but in a neater and more convenient way. Let me know in the comments. Now, one final point I would like to wade in on is that of expense. Now, clearly some of this tech is at the more expensive end of the spectrum and therefore out of reach for some bike riders. And I would hate for you to think that somehow you can't ride anymore because you don't have a radar fitted to your bike. If you do want to know what's going on behind you, a simple rear view mirror will let you know, even if it's not a direct replacement for radar. And many people use them because it gives them more confidence when they ride. Unfortunately, lights aren't that expensive, or at least they don't have to be. And so they are within reach of just about all of us, I would have thought. Anyway, please give this video a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. And remember, get involved in the comment section.